Hello everybody, James here, Storytime with Dutch Mantel, episode 96, and for the video of uh, the video watchers among you, I'm wearing sunglasses again, they're my most hated pet peeve, because the blind man who was supposed to fit my blinds cancelled on us, so it's going to be another few weeks, but let's do the plugs right now, PWTs, we're on PWTs, Pro Wrestling Tees, links are in the description where you can get your official merchandise for Storytime with Dutch Mantel, you could also get your 3D glasses from, uh, no you can't get 3D glasses. But what about the 3D glasses, Dutch? Did you enjoy the eclipse? Hey, I got a bitch about that. You talk about wrestling fans being bitchy. Well, I'm sitting here. I'm in Florida, and I'm sitting there, and I, it never got dark. It never got anywhere close to dark. And I was sitting outside with my daughter, and we were looking, and I said, is that it? Is that it? And she was telling me, and I'm telling her, and... I was disappointed in the eclipse. I, re I really was. If I'd have bought a ticket to see the eclipse under these conditions, guess where I'd be the next day? I'd be at their home office or at least sending them an email saying, I want a, I, I, I want a refund because I think it was disappointing. I've seen eclipses before where it got dark, but it didn't do anything close to that here. It was strong. I will say that because it had a really strong sun. It was trying to cover up. But I looked up the first time, and it was like a third across, like the moon was coming across. And then I looked back about, I don't know, three, four, five minutes later, and it looked like it hadn't grown and was actually going back the way it came. It, it didn't do it for me, so... It was a bust for me. Do you know, I've just realized, looking at myself there, I'm wearing sunglasses. I'm worried. Maybe people think I actually went blind from trying to look at the eclipse myself. But I, <laughs> I was in Philadelphia at the time. I'll talk about that in a minute. And I would forgot about it. I just noticed, huh, it's got a bit darker. And then just carried on playing Candy Crush or whatever I was doing. Yeah, what time was that? Day. About, three or four o'clock in the yeah, afternoon? Yeah, about half three, something like that, I think it was. Did anybody else say the it's the eclipse or yeah, were cloudy. they watching it too? It was cloudy. It was there cloudy. were a lot of people. There were a lot of people on the streets, but I don't think anyone could see anything. So it was a bust for you too. Not really, because I didn't look it, forward to it. Yeah, but it, well, it was a bust because one thing is the clouds. So you would have seen a, a lot more had not those pesky little crowds been around. The clouds been around. So, but again. As The Rock called him, the biggest collection of trailer park trash ever assembled <laughs> <laughs> in one building. And I, when I heard that, I popped at WrestleMania. I mean, at, I think that was on Raw. Oh, it was great. And let's do the rest of the plugs quickly. Dutch has got books. I've got books. My books you can get on Amazon by The Rock, the aforementioned Rock and Owen Hart. Dutch, uh, Tales from a Dirt Road and The World According to Dutch, you can get on Amazon unsigned. Or if you want them signed, you go to Dirty Dutch Mantel with two L's at gmail.com. You can also get signed hats and signed diplomas. Just email Dirty Dutch Mantel with two L's at gmail.com for more information, pricing and shipping and all that kind of thing. And Dutch will get it out to you. Uh, ask Dutch anything. Oh, we... one thing. Yep. My website that I've been promoting <laughs> forever. Since before we started this podcast. Actually, I have a guy now, and he's from the UK. He's offered to help me with it hmm. at a price that is affordable, like free. But so um, um, I think he listens to the show. And his name is James, too, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure. I've been hit on the head too many times. But anyway, uh, I will inform everybody when my University of Dutch website is uh, open and, and working. So, I mean, it's open. You can go over there now, but there's nothing that much. So, But I'll, I'll let everybody know. And one more thing is we didn't have Ask Dutch anything last week because with WrestleCon and WrestleMania and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Blah. We just didn't That's do right. it last week. It, was just, it just wasn't happening. And then my editor decided to also go on holiday for the first time in a long time as well. It just so happened to be on that weekend. So, uh, but it's back now, this now week. Now, why, why did he, i got to ask you a question. Why would your editor go on hiatus, like that word, hiatus during WrestleMania weekend? Well, on the Isn't amount that I the pay him, I can't believe he could afford it. Is it? <laughs> but out of respect... Out of respect, why would he go WrestleMania weekend? That's like the 
that's like the New Year's for everybody else. It's you know WrestleMania. WrestleMania is WrestleMania. Well, he didn't go to Philly. He went to uh, Spain or something like that. But uh, I think it's because it's Easter half term over here. So I mean, do kids get a couple of weeks off at Easter over there? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they well, they get two weeks off here. So I figure they both got kids. I don't so know they if they get. Kids. I don't know if they get two weeks off for Easter or not. They get something, I think. Mm-hmm. Get free egg. No, they they get uh, they get two uh, three sessions of you know away from school. Mm-hmm. One's in the fall and one's in the spring. So I would imagine yeah, it would be around Easter. Yeah, but I'm not sure. Uh, do you want to? Well, uh, shall I bore you with my WrestleCon stories, or shall we just carry on um, into all the news? If you can, can you overlook my? If they're boring, if I go to sleep. Yeah, don't worry. I can switch the cameras. So it'll just be on me. You can sleep <laughs> okay. in peace. Uh, no, uh, very, first off, I want to give everybody at Woo.game, uh, the wrestling organization online, a big thank you. They hooked me up with some people to interview, and they're all going to be out on WSI in the coming months as well. well question. Yes. Who did you interview? Less people that I wanted to, but we got quite a few in the can. We got uh, Perry Satin, who was an absolute diamond, and... He, he, Perry Sam, just what a great guy. He watches this as well, as well. So hello, Perry. Does he? Yeah, he Hi, does Perry. indeed. Hi, Perry. So, so, we, okay. uh, so I was very pleased to interview him, and we had dinner and just hung out, hung out with him for like two days on and off, which was really, really cool to do. Had other people like Raven, Sabu, Fonzie, uh, Bill Alfonso, your old pal from Florida. Yep. Ah, Fonzie told me something. I want, I, I want to see if it's true. Uh, he said that when you were booking Florida in '84. That yeah. Michael Hayes was your like subordinate booker, and then do you know that Michael Hayes then used to ask Bill Alfonso for his opinion? So he was like the subordinate of the subordinate. <laughs> That's okay, because get as many opinions as you can, and you may think about it a different way. Bill Alfonso is a good guy, yeah. great referee, funny as hell. Because none of us were making any money, so we might as well throw some humor in there to get, to get through the day. But but I actually enjoyed booking Florida. I really did. I like with Fonzie as well. He always calls it right down the middle, Daddy. Still after all these years. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was it was good to it's put good to put like a physical presence to all these guys that I've interviewed over the yep. last few years. So it was it was just crazy. Saw Bobby Fulton. It's weird that he recognised me, <laughs> and he ran up to me and he and he and he's like, "James, I want a photo with you." So we had a photo. He took it on his phone and then he walked off. <laughs> so I don't have a photo with Bobby. He's got a photo with me. How would he look? Good. Yeah, pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's still got the thing with the tongue and everything. That you know, that's not good. Yeah. Really, yeah. Uh, that uh, is a you know a huge shame because I believe he got like cancer, didn't he? Uh, tongue cancer. He like had that. something like that, and he went through several surgeries and so far it it hadn't got him so he's still in there yeah and he's still except for his voice he's still the same bobby mm. so good guy used to he used to live with me did he oh yeah and when he worked in memphis he was you know he come in i knew he wasn't making he's he wasn't going to make any money so i offered i said hey you want to you you can come stay with me. Never took any money from him, you know. And we, you know, we just, I'd just ride with him every day, and, or he'd ride with me, or whatever. And but yeah. one day, my old lady got real mad at me, and I said, "F it, I'm leaving." I said, "Come on, Bobby, let's go." He went. I swear to God, he went. Me? She's not mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> She's mad at you. I said, get your ass up and let's go. <laughs> That's a true story. He's enjoying, he's enjoying the, free, she's, the free room. She's not mad at me. She's mad at you. <laughs> I never will forget that. But he was a good guy. Yeah, still is. Still is Bobby as well. Yeah. Everyone likes Bobby. Uh, the only other thing I was going to mention with Sabu is that, uh, that this has been in the news. He no-showed his own Hall of Fame speech. But he didn't show no. My, no show my interview the next day. So I probably spent about three hours with Sabu laughing and joking with him and interviewing as well. So that was mm-hmm. a bizarre thing. And the first thing that I was told was, you know, he no showed the uh, Hall of Fame yesterday. 
So we were talking about that. Okay, the Hall of Fame, the WWE Hall of Fame? Or no, no, this is the uh, GCW Independent Wrestling Hall of Fame. Sabu was yeah. the headliner. Mentally. Yeah, and he didn't go. And he didn't go. No. Uh, the only public exclamation, uh, exclamation, uh, explanation he's given is he changed his mind. Really? Well, yeah. that's reason anyway. Mm-hmm. And what did he give you for the reason? Oh, he told me, it did. yeah, he's told me a reason, but I mean, that's not for me to say. Publicly, anyway. Oh, okay. So. So he missed it on purpose. Yeah, it was in the same hotel. <laughs> so he was in the same hotel. He was upstairs. He was uh, absent downstairs. Now, I wonder, did they send anybody to knock on his door? Well, it wasn't me who knocked on his door. I had him the next day. But that, but that was after I found that out. I was like, huh? No way did you. No way did you do the interview with me <laughs> after that. Well, maybe he didn't feel like doing it. No, I think that's. I think that's basically pretty much it. But anyway, right. um, and there goes my story of WrestleCon. The maybe the most stressful weekend of my life because it took me thirty six hours to get there due to a delayed flight and a missed connection. And then, did I tell you this bit, Dutch? Is that when I got to my hotel, I'd emailed them in advance saying, I'm going to be a day late, just expect me at so-and-so time. And by the time I got there, they claimed that I'd never sent them an email, even though I'd showed them proof. It's called the Windsor Suites, by the way. Don't ever book there. They're a piece of shit. And then they, uh, to- I- and then they told me... The Windsor Suites? Yeah, the Windsor Suites, Philadelphia. Don't ever, ever book there. They gave my room away. They basically called me a liar saying that I hadn't emailed them in advance when I'd emailed their customer service department. And then it took them nearly an hour. And they said they were sold out, quote unquote. And they weren't. So they managed to eventually find a room for me. I didn't get an apology. I didn't get anything. And here's the kicker. I paid in advance. Wow. That's highly unlike them to do this, but I don't don't know. You know, they always leave a couple of rooms anyway in case of an emergency. That's what they put you in if they gave you a room away. I figure so, yeah. But man. All right, so everybody get your uh, computer out and write windsorsuites.com. Is that it? Well, it's just the Windsor Suites Philadelphia. But I left him a stinking review. Like I was, <laughs> I'd, I'd, yeah. turned, I'd, I'd summoned my inner Karen to uh, really that, they write this pit- review. They have pissed me off now. Get it out. Windsor Suites, Philadelphia. One word? Well, dot com. Dot sentence. com. I don't know what the website is, but you can just Google it. Anyway, well, so you, yeah. How are you going to bitch and moan about somebody and you don't know the website for our people, our supporters, to like back you up? Oh, but you just Google it and then you do it on the Google review thing. Oh, oh okay. I say. But yeah. I'm uh, going to do it right. I didn't know this, but that pissed me off. Yeah. I mean, and I if mean, you hadn't got, <clears throat> and if you if they hadn't gave you a room, guess what? You'd have been homeless. Yeah, I would have had to have slept in my suitcase. Well, you would have had to. I don't know what you would have done, but you you wouldn't be staying in Philadelphia. I tell you that you'd had to get out somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, but this was all after thirty six hours, essentially, of travel time. So Were you tired? And miserable. And then, well, let me okay, taking that in, into account, what you said. That has been the wrestler's life for like 30 years. Well, I, I texted you this, didn't I, Dutch? And I said, Dutch, how do you do it? Yep. Especially after, how do you do it? Or how did We you would do, do that and show up. Oh, we got rid of it. And we'd, you know, and damn wonder some of us didn't go to jail. Because a lot of wrestlers that if they don't eat properly, they, they get irritable as hell. And they are hard to deal with. And even though somebody's saying, just calm down, calm down. Well, they don't want to calm down because they're hungry and they're tired. And what they want to do, they want to get something to eat and they want to go to sleep. But if you don't have a room, you can't do that. So I've, I've seen a lot of arguments between wrestlers and uh, front desk personnel. And it, sometimes it got out of hand, really did. Mm. Not physically, but, you know, verbally. Do you ever had a room cancelled on you when you've paid in advance? Mm, I never paid in advance, really. I'm just uh, making a reservation to show up. Damn wonder. I've had, I've been kicked out of rooms. 
What it was, you, was me. Nothing. We had come from somewhere to somewhere. I don't know. And we got into the room at five o'clock in the morning. I can't remember who was with me. And I called up to front desk and got in an argument with them about something. There was three of us in a room and and we had been in the room. We got in there about say four 30 in the morning at five 15, we were leaving the room. They kicked us out because the, the argument was so strong. Again, I was hungry and I was tired. I said a few things maybe I shouldn't have said, and they asked us to leave. So, and I said, well, I'm not, I'm not leaving. And some of the other guys said, come on, come on. We got to get out of here. I'll think about who that was in a minute and mm. come back with it. And I can't even remember where the room was. I think it was in Memphis. The for some reason. Bambo. But no, not there. <laughs> hey, Benbo, that's a university of what hotels not to check into. <laughs> Ah oh, dear. Damn, uh, who was with who was with me? Well while you're thinking Can't remember. That, while you're thinking that, I'll tell you the rest of the story because I was so stressed with the hotel. I couldn't sleep and because I'm also on a different time zone and I couldn't eat. So you know when you get to the point where you're so stressed that you just you just can't eat anything. Anyway, that went for about three days, so I didn't get any sleep or barely ate anything for three days. I think it took me until Monday to have two meals in a day. So man, I was on fumes the entire time. And also, I got a I got a bird's eye view of. I won't name any names, but the easy people to deal with, the difficult people to deal with, and the popular people at WrestleCon as well. I tell you what, one th- one apart from like the headlines like Sting, Ronda Rousey, Ric Flair, those people, they're always going to get a big line. The Hardy Boys, boy, were they popular? We we we're not going to talk about Matt Hardy. He's he's now a free agent, but. Uh, they were really popular, especially together. A couple of other people, like Sergeant Slaughter was really popular. Perry Tatman was really popular, I'm glad to say. And some other people as well that I was uh, ple- really pleased for them as well. But man, I got some stories over that weekend, let me tell you. You got one for me? Off air, yeah. I've got loads for you off oh, air. Oh, you can't even get this on air. No. Oh, no. Really? No. Wow. So, yeah. and see Teased see fans there. this is this is in keeping with the pg uh arrangement that we have mm-hmm. uh, if and if you're saying that we can't give it out on air i gotta hear this so t- sure, t- i may i might be able to rearrange it and retell it in a completely different format do you want me to just pause this recording and then tell you before i forget well you can okay i'm pausing one sec there you go. Just told Dutch four stories there. That was oh interesting, wasn't God. it? Oh, my God. It was interesting. But again, nothing that surprised me at all. Because some of these uh, actions or interactions between you and some of the talent sounds exactly like the talent. You know, I don't know if it's me or I try to stay in my own lane or I try to, I can see a problem coming and kind of calm it down before it gets there. But if, if I see any kind of a disagreement between me and somebody else, oh, you just say, hey, brother, let's let's talk about it. But see, a lot of guys don't. See, they will get mad at you because you never put on a pair of tights and boots. So to to them, you're an outsider. To me, you're not an outsider. You're an insider on a, just a different level. But you know what I'm talking about. But these people that you mentioned, uh, being late, being this, being that, getting into arguments, yeah, it sounds just like, you know, if you'd have brought their name up to me, I could have picked them out. Yeah. Yeah, like if it was in like a photo fit or the photo array. Something like that, you'd get it. Uh, once again, just thank you. How many everybody. good pictures? How many good pictures did you get? Do you know what was freaky? Dozens <laughs> of people stopped me and said hello or shook my hand. For you wanted a photo for me. Yeah, that's good. So what, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Did you get my autograph? 
No, I never signed one. No one asked me for one, but I just got a load of handshakes and photos. Hey, if I'd have been there, I said, walk up to James and tell him you recognize him and want an autograph. No, you don't. You say, walk up to James and pinch his bottom. He'd really like that. <laughs> and I said, he'll talk about that for like ever on the show, but it gives him something to talk about. Uh, no, yeah. Freak me out. Freak this, me out every this, single time. I mean, I, I, I even listen to the show sometimes back. And I enjoy it because we're talking about something we all love. We all are, we are all interested in and what happened here, what happened there. Oh, so, but continue. We'll get into this a little bit later. Well, yeah, we're actually going to go into our first news piece. There's two major bits of news, of course, WrestleMania and the CM Punk video that we'll be talking about later on in the show. But uh, once again, just very briefly, thank you to everybody at Woo Ga- uh, Woo.Game. Uh, yeah, I can't remember if it's Woo.Game or Woo.Game. So I think it's Woo.Game. Uh, I encourage you all to give it a try. Find the link. I'll put a link in the description as well. I think for people as well to search for it. But what's the what's the name of it? Woo dot. Yeah, W O O. Well, there's wrestling organization online. Yeah, and Woo dot game for the website as well. So okay. Let's talk about WrestleMania then. So the highest income generating WrestleMania ever by an enormous margin with ridiculously high ticket prices, most attended, taking into account both days together. Uh, merchandise sales improved 20% over the last year, the most watched WrestleMania, I believe. I think we believe ever, and one of the finest endings to a WrestleMania ever as well. This weekend can only be described as an unmitigated success for WWE, and especially with NXT and the post-WrestleMania Raw, they also drew the biggest gates in their respective histories as well now i tried to get you to watch all of wrestlemania and we both looked at each other and went that's not gonna happen but i've watched most (laughs) you've watched the majority i think and there were three matches that you uh have written i tell you you saved my life because you you sent me some detailed notes of those matches as well i was so pleased you did uh because i fell asleep twice during that jimmy versus ju so much and i tried my best to watch it but there were three matches you want to talk about and the first one is Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. Well, textbook match. See, they went into that match. They had the work and the story do the work for them. They went in there. The more story you have, the less work you really got to do. I mean, they had them. Just because the fans aren't up screaming from the beginning... It's not how it starts, it how it how it ends. And this was a, an example of uh, WWE booking 20 years ago. It was that finish, they would they would run this guy in and somebody else would come in and somebody else would come in and somebody else would come in to the final. And that's the way they did this. And the people loved that. And it was spaced out too. It wasn't boom, 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 boom. It was guy going, he'd stay a minute and here to come the other guy. He'd stay like a minute or maybe a little less. But it all made sense. And I wrote a, a tweet and put it on X. And I says, this, it was textbook. It's what it was. Oh, well, they could have been a bit more nitpick it. We could nitpick this or that. But it was a textbook finish. But what? What I judge that on is the people were happy. They had went through this for two years, and they were talked, well, he should do this and take it a third year. Well, it wouldn't make it a third year. I think the people, after they got so mad last year over Cody losing, even though he got beat, I mean, they they were looking at like, well, hell, you guys put this together. Make us happy a little bit. We bought a ticket. And the, I, I'm – Pretty sure they didn't have any inclinations of keeping Roman the champion after this, because I think everything is has has been coordinated that Roman will be leaving for a while. And the Rock said he was leaving for a while. Mm -hmm. So we might see a completely different role, but we know that the Rock is coming back. And we know that sometimes Roman Reigns will come back. And when he comes back, it will be a huge, huge angle when he comes back. So they have laid that out there. They haven't told us this. They haven't told the fans that. But in the back of their minds, they know that's out there. So when, when are they coming? How are they coming? 
So they got to look forward to that. It was a a really, really uh, great paper. You and I, I, I was talking about my tweet I put up. I said, booking is like you don't book higher than a 10-year-old level so that he can understand it. And then if they understand it, everybody understands it. So, but I think they have tried to, in the past, put too much into things or move it too too fast. This has been a slow build, a two year slow build. And I've said before, I think Cody getting hurt actually helped him because they gave him more time to think about him, and it gave him more time that he wasn't involved in the regime change. Because, and I don't think anybody really got hurt by that, but I think it really helped Cody because he was sitting out there, he was doing his stuff, <clears throat> and he got hurt in such a way with that bad bruise. People remember that. Also, they set a record with Cody Rhodes doing over a million dollars in merchandise just for him. Did they really? Over a million. It set a record. I didn't know that. I mean, I set a record, too. I was in a Pine Grove, Arkansas one time, and I did like $75. That was a record for the town, by the way. I just want to say, <laughs> you don't look at don't look at the, the money, the amounts. It was just look at the record. And at Pine Grove or whatever I was in, I, I did a record there. But, you know, a million dollars in merchandise. And that's one guy. One guy. What do you think The Rock did? Got him merch. Um, it's a good question because he's not really come out with new T-shirts this run, has he? Seems but to be. I'm sure, but yeah. I'm sure they got something out there. But a, oh, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people won't buy the heel stuff. A lot of them will. But see, Rock is what you call. Uh, he could be a heel really easily. If but you have to have a baby face that is over more than him, and he hadn't really found that. I don't think Cody even fits that. But he is really, really over. The whole company is just is just red hot right now, red hot. So, but them doing seventy two thousand people every night in Philadelphia. I mean, it's and it was cold. It was like fifty degrees. That's cold. Yeah, it was cold. It was in a cold. big windy stadium. It's cold. Yeah. But they sat out there. And they had these stories to see, and they damn sure were going to see them, and WWE damn sure gave it to them. Now, you've said here, I'm actually looking at Dutch's notes for this match. You said The Undertaker was... See, fans, it's not all James that does this show. I, I make notes myself. I said this to you before. <laughs> I was so pleased that you came up with the notes for this because I was <laughs> dying. I was like, oh, I'm so tired. And then you just, and then you sent me like two pages worth of notes, and I was like, oh, Dutch, you little diamond. You saved me some, you saved me some time. <laughs> diamond Dutch. Yeah, hey, Diamond that's a good Dutch. Name. <clears throat> that's a good name. So if anybody comes out with it, we can sell it because we used it here first. Yes, that's right. Uh, you said, I mean, The Undertaker, dong, going off, you know, the crowd went absolutely nuts. But you said if Steve Austin had come out. Do you, have you heard any reason as to why Steve Austin wasn't there? Because as we said last week or the week before, there was like a a John Cena and Steve Austin truck motif behind The Rock when uh, when The Rock was giving yep. Cody Rhodes that beating out in the uh, arena car park. and But then Steve Austin doesn't show up, it's The Undertaker. But have you heard any, any reasons to why Austin wasn't there? I haven't heard any reasons. But what I'm thinking, he's, he was either tied up or something else, or probably fishing. <laughs> or they may not have offered him enough money. But... If he'd have showed up, that would have been the coup de gras. I, I think that if he'd have showed up, the roof would have come off that stadium. Even more than uh, than uh, Cena or Undertaker, I think if Stone Cold had showed up and you hear that glass breaking and all of a sudden he's coming down there and you know he's doing whatever he's doing, I, I think the roof would have come off. I also think that if Cody hadn't have won – they may have burnt that stadium down. <laughs> I mean, and those people were ready for it. See, it's fun to watch things like that. The people will come. It's what an old time booker told me one time. The people will come to see the good guy win. They will not come 
to see the bad guy win. And this was presented in such a way that they kind of telegraphed it that Cody was Cody was going over. But that's 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 the booking thing that you've always said. It's like just slap me in the face with it and then give the people yes. what they paid for. And when the and when you have a heel like Roman and you've gone for three years, four years with him, you know, there's gotta be come they there has to come some point where he gets knocked off that mountain. And WrestleMania was the perfect time to knock him down the ramp, knock him off that mountain. And of course it was like a, a good old time at the, at the rodeo afterwards. Cause the ring filled up, you know, I read that, uh, Bro uh, Brody, the guy in AEW Brody Lee. Yeah. Said his son was in there. Is that true? I believe, yeah. Uh, so that makes two AEW contracted talents, or at least according to their roster page. Uh, and and he, he, the kid's called Zero One. It's sort of like a joke kind of thing, you know, after his father died and it was something nice for them to do. So Zero One was in a WWE ring in the main event, or post-main event anyway, which I thought was funny. Also, Keith Lee was shown in uh, the Hall of Fame on Friday as well. And that... That describes to me that the regime and uh, and the atmosphere has changed. I don't know because you they would should never have let see. Dustin. They should have let Dustin Rhodes. Well, Dustin. Go. Well, wait a minute. Why didn't Dustin come? I read a reason. I think. Well, I think probably he was booked, but also, you know, logistically they could have done it, but I just don't think Tony wanted to let him, and that is entirely Tony's prerogative. I mean, WWE have played AEW dirty many, many times, and. Vice versa, I'm sure, as well. Yeah, Cody, I mean, uh, Dustin should have been there. That would that would have been good. But you don't see, a, in, in WWE, you don't see a lot of people jumping in a ring and celebrating a victory for one of the guys. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when they was beating Cody's butt out by the truck, I mean, Rock was, I said, he must be the most hated man in the WWE uh, dressing room because nobody comes to help him. See, that was a, almost a, a go-to statement in like the old territories because we'd always run some baby faces in there and get him off and, and, and get him off the guy he was beating up because what's to stop them? I mean, they should go and um, if they keep on, they possibly – could kill him. I've seen some of those go on for like 10 minutes. And you say, come on, guys, give us a break. Make it at least just a little bit believable. If a guy's getting his ass whipped so bad, wouldn't you have some guys from the back or security or something help out? Well, forget security because security can't do nothing with WWE wrestlers. You know, they, they walk through them like they're water. They're nothing. But but I think they did that right. And the only thing I can find to bitch about, and but I'm going to bitch about it, and then I'm going to applaud it, is uh, what is the uh, the ring announcer, the girl ring announcer's oh, name? Damn it. She's called Samantha something. Samantha uh, Irvin. Yes. She tried to make that announcement after Cody won. And I don't know if she knew the finish or not. Doesn't matter. But she was so caught up with the story that's been told to her. And it's a, it's a fairy tale. And, we, and they put the camera on her. When she was doing her announcement that Cody is the new undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, she broke up. She was almost, she almost started crying which is a testament to the guys in the ring and a testament to the way they told the story. It's a testament to everybody in WWE that had anything to do with this. I don't know what I'm doing out here applauding WWE so much, but they, they did it right. And this will be probably the, they say WrestleMania 17 was the other great, greatest three WrestleMania. Hogan Andre 17. 30, you could argue, because I really enjoyed that with Daniel Bryan winning. Um, but I think this was 
Oh, this was much better. I mean, the ending was. I'll, but I'll, they told, hey, Daniel Bryan's story was very good. So now I hope, and I think Triple H knows, that you got to invest in stories. Matches, eh, not so much. Because you can tell matches because they concentrate uh, more on the entrance than the match. Mm -hmm. Uh some of those entrances, especially The Rock and Roman Reigns, how they take five minutes, four minutes. Uh, but that, that gets them over because then they're not getting the same entrance time or, uh, say, applause from the announcers that the, the other guys get, which clearly makes them like A1 material. So uh, I really enjoyed it. But I think this will be the number one WrestleMania of all time. And going forward, they're going to compare, uh, say, WrestleMania 41. They will compare that. Well, was it better than 40? Or, say, 48. Well, was it better than 40? And they may have some d good discussions in uh, with that possibility because I think it's going to take a hell of a story and a bill to beat this one we just saw. 17's in my heart, though. And um, the problem with the modern WrestleMania is, is, for me, is that it just takes so long in between matches. I mean, they could have condensed each of those nights down to three hours each, no problem. But they do okay, drag they, things out too much. They have commercials in these too, right? They've got commercials, and then the entrances take forever, and it's like, come on, gang, let's... Quit bitching. Speed it up a bit. It's eight yeah, hours. that is that is a <laughs> that is a complaint of mine. Please, let's get to it a little more. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, speed it up just a little bit because I'm not interested in. And I know that's how they make money. I got it, but it's not making money for me. It's making money for them. And a lot of times, I don't even pay attention to to the commercials anyway. It's just like it's in the background somewhere. And I might remember, but, you know, some of the things they advertise, you know, they're all, they, they've are they already been advertised to death. What's a candy bar they, they do? Slim Jim. It's that sort of processed meat stick. Yeah. Well, what kind of, don't they do a candy bar? Oh, Snickers. Uh, Snickers. And if I went into a store and, I, a store and I, I see Snickers, well, I know exactly what it is. It's not because... WWE told me about it because I guess because they harp on it so much, the Snickers and but it it, it is a, a brand that I buy every now and then, not not too much. Uh, but but companies do this on purpose. I mean I mean like someone like Coca Cola or Budweiser or whatever. It's essentially vanity advertising. It's meant as a loss leader, but it's to be associated to be seen with other giant products to make them seem as you say you know uh, top tier. But they, okay, they probably will make a loss. That. Loss leader. What's that mean? A loss leader is that you know you're going to lose money on a certain venture, but you sort of take the loss on the chin because it's worth it in other ways. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I have to write that down. Wait yeah. a minute. Well, loss leader. While you're it. writing that down, we're going to move on to, well, we're actually sort of going backwards here. You also wrote some notes for Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre, which should be said that Drew McIntyre has apparently still not signed a new WWE deal. So that'd be interesting to see how they uh, deal with him in the next couple of months. But uh, this was the opener to well, WrestleMania. Uh, this is WrestleMania Sunday. It was the opener too, and it was really good. Okay, match. first off, yeah, it was a good match, and a, it was actually a great finish. But it had a double finish, and I figured they may do this here. Um, I didn't bring that up because I didn't think about it. But he won the the title. Uh, Drew McIntyre, and then as is it, uh, what did uh, Damien win? He King had money the in the bank, a uh, money in the bank, That's yeah. Right. So he cashed it in at the end, and, here, so. and he cashed in. And I like how Drew's happiness and glee <laughs> went from here to here. Because then Damon went in there and beat him one, two, three. He's the new champion. So we got 
a double champion. How long did Drew's championship reign last? A few minutes, I think. So under under three or under four, around there, around there. So he was taunting CM Punk, who was in commentary, and he taunted him for too long, and then uh, CM Punk sweeps Drew, and then uh, reveals that he doesn't need his arm brace for his torn triceps anymore, and then hits him with the brace, and then that's when Damian Priest comes down. And it's one of those things where this is the kind of thing that I always think, this is exactly what Dutch would book. There's a brief yeah. minute of happiness, and then you're on to the next story. And that story now, it turns Punk loose to go after two guys, Damien Priest and McIntyre, two people. And uh, or it turns uh, McIntyre loose to go after CM Punk or Damien Priest. And there's three of them. So you got three or four different possible combinations just right out of the door because they've had uh, they've had uh, connections and different matches, and you couldn't have a better connection than WrestleMania. I mean, if you're connected with somebody there, you're going to be connected for the next six months with them. WWE, when they book, this is what they 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 might book at one time. Uh, let me say sixty shows they will book out and you know, that sounds like a lot, but it's really not because sometimes they'll take the same card they have in Boston and they'll put it in Baltimore, which is about, I don't know, good ways apart, but, and they'll use sometimes the same finish. And I used to think about this with these people knowing that this match ended this way, will it hurt for them for it to be to end the same way that way. Well, it did. And WWE continued to grow. <clears throat> so they will, and the rest of the time before they book a match, they had to say it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And you look forward to it. But they really book a lot of shows. And it's the sometimes the lineups are the exact same as it was the night before. And the night before, or the week before, because they all they're, they're using. How many times will they go to, let's say, Philadelphia in a year? Oh, I don't know. Two or uh, three times. Yeah, that, that that'd be my guess. Yeah. And New York, they don't go to New York, Madison Square Garden that often. They go what two or three times? Two, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, in Boston, I think the same thing. I think the garden used to be a uh, like a month out. That Boston used to be every three out. weeks. It used to be Boston Garden, Madison Square Garden. Uh, every three weeks? Yeah, uh, every three weeks. Yeah, For Toronto every three weeks, it seemed, at one point. Chicago is at least every month. Yeah. But see, look at the towns they had. Look at the venues they had. Look at the TV coverage they had. I mean, they, they used to burn it down, but I have heard... Sometimes it just goes on its ass. If you don't do the right thing, I don't care in what kind of environment you're in. If you don't do the right stuff on TV <clears throat> and excite the fans in that particular market, you're going to be looking at a half house. I went to Madison Square Garden one time. That's when they had just uh, brought in uh, the goon. Remember the goon? And the plumber's, the plumber's son. Dirty white boy. They had brought him in. Not caught him Dusty something. Rhodes. <laughs> no, but it was. Uh, no, that'd be uh, T. L. Hopper. T. L. Hopper and a few more. I swear, if they'd been five thousand, six thousand people out there, I'd be surprised. It's, and that is that is when you we would use that old expression in wrestling. You could shoot a shotgun off in there and not hit any of them. That means there was some here and some here and some over there. And, but, but I've learned a lot being in this business all these, all these years. But it all came together on this WrestleMania. They did it all right. And they did it in such a way that was almost predictable. But yet it still sold out and did records. Speaking of, did you predict that? And this is the other match we're going to be talking about. Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Did you predict that Sami Zayn would win? No, I did not. Did you not? I did not predict because I didn't see that much of a stretch of the imagination that 
I mean, you can come up with ways to make that possible. Because I think in Sammy, see, this is another thing that I'm, I'm leaving out. You can bet on wrestling now. What is it? DraftKings? DraftKings. Whoops. I've messed up my You camera. can bet. Skype bet I use or have done, yeah. On wrestling. Which I kind of like. But if I had a bet on Gunther and Sammy, I would have bet that Gunther would have beat him and continued his run. Because I think he's the next really mega heel in WWE. It'll be Gunther. They may, you know, repackage him a little bit. But, and I predicted before, he's just in people, a lot of people don't even remember this guy. And probably in the uh, middle, mid Atlantic, they will remember him if they're by age. Uh, Gunther is the second coming of Johnny Valentine. And I've said to Johnny Valentine, he didn't do spots. He does beat the living crap out of you. And him and Wahoo made wrestling believable. If you took somebody to see a match and it's in our wrestling, it's not real, ah, bull crap, and you set them down at ringside to watch a Wahoo and a Johnny Valentine match is to watch a bloodbath almost. They would chop each other so hard in the chest, not in the face, but in the chest. And I think that was... You know, if somebody thought, well, why don't they hit each other in the face with that chop? And I think the announcers used to cover it. Well, it's gentleman's agreement. And people bought that. You know, or, or I, I've heard that before, maybe not on TV, but I've heard that before. They decided not to hit anybody in the face, go here, see who can take it to most. And they would leave those matches. And Valentine didn't go 10 minutes, 15 minutes. He'd go... 45 minutes, 50 minutes, even on smaller shows like, see, Charlotte was a big show. Let's let's pick another town. Greenville was a big, say, Anderson, South Carolina, which was nowhere like Charlotte in the drawing or nowhere like Greenville, but they would still go 45 minutes. They would give the fans who bought a ticket a show. Because I don't know who this is attributed to, but I used to hear in wrestling, uh, if only 10 fans showed up, it's not their fault more people didn't show up, but they bought a ticket and they are due the best match that you can give them. And that that's true. But uh, Gunther, getting back to S- Gunther and Sammy. Well, I, you know, because you're getting back at Sammy, I'm actually going to bring up a couple of things from your notes here. To say fans love Sammy and the fight is in his heart. Why did? How does Sammy get the emotional elements, as you have written here, with every time he steps in the ring? What is it about Sammy that draws the fans yeah. in? Sort of like Cody. They're not it's, mega charismatic, but they are. Well, I was going to say the same thing, but in a different way. But it's... Chemistry is all I can say. Here's little Sammy Zane. You look at him. He looks like he's never even walked by a gym. He looks like a regular fan getting in there and and some kind of army fatigues. And he's got red hair and a red beard. So he looks like he could be your next door neighbor, maybe. But you pull for him because he's the underdog. He's not as big as Gunther. He's not as strong as Gunther. But yet his fight and his heart, as I put down there, you know, it transcends transcends everything. And the kids, the kids love him. Because he's closer to their size. And they were just waiting to where they can... Hang on one second. Stop a second. Huh? One second. And and the kids pull for him. We had to take a little break there. But he just has that. That's up to the booker to find. 
I mean, when he walks through the door, he looks like the farthest thing you would imagine of being a main eventer or even a really important match. But yet, the chemistry with Sammy and the fans is because he's a good talker. He's likable. Even as a heel, he's likable. And when they turn him babyface, that's the only thing I can say. Because he doesn't do any more things different than other people. He's just Sami Zayn. He's, and even if he has an agent, the agent can't go out there and tell him to do certain things. If I was an agent of Sammy, you know what I'd tell him? Just be Sammy. Just go out there and do what got you here. And he knows what that means, and he goes out and he does it. I also think that they let him uh, go over. And what did Gunther have, their inter intercontinental title? He did for two years almost, I think. They, like they let him go over to reward him for all the great work he's done up to this point. And it also tells me they're going to take Gunther and do something else with him, or they're going to take they're going to take uh, Sammy and do something else with him. But they're not going to leave this story completely. They will come back to it sometime in the future. Could come back in a year. Who knows? Because now WWE has gotten into that long build mode, and they know what they're doing. Another thing that makes this work, the long build mode, is people don't forget. I've been watching wrestling with people and they said, ah, he wouldn't do that. He hates that guy because they do it on the spur of the moment. There's no bill to it. And they remember that. And they might remember, I've been around some people. They remember, uh, matches these guys had three years ago, four years ago. Now, not, not all of them, but basically, it's like seeing a movie and something does something and it doesn't look right. You go, I don't know now. It's actually damaged the movie a little bit. Not that you don't enjoy it totally. But wrestling is not doing that as much as it used to. But I'm glad to see Sammy uh, get acknowledged. Uh, I'm glad that they put the title on him. because. It... But now, when you go into the creative room and you look at what you got, you got an entirely different slate that you're looking at and now you got to take back and i don't know if it's easier at this point or could be harder I, i'm liking to think that it's a little bit easier because now they got all these different uh combinations they can go with <clears throat> and see what they want to do we don't really critique the wrestling matches like the moves themselves that much but at the end uh sammy breaks out his old finishing move or one of his old finishing moves from the independent days that I'm sure Vince McMahon banned him from doing. I don't know if he ever did it in WWE, but certainly not what done it that? in a while. The top that, the... rope brain buster onto the turnbuckle. Yep. Have you ever seen that before? I may have seen it years ago, but just because a guy used it years ago doesn't mean I've seen it because if, if Vince bans it, bans it, where else am I going to see it? <clears throat> I'm, not a, I'm not a stickler for going back and studying these guys' moves years ago. But I, and I don't know why Vince banned it anyway. It's not, but that's another clue that we are truly in a different regime. And, and if, if Triple H made this much improvement in this, actually a shorter amount of time, then he's, he knows exactly what he's doing. So my hat's off to him. Uh, which of the three were your favorite? I mean, matches? me and James, me and you, we could have done it, of course. Oh God, yeah. I mean that that, that goes without saying. Yeah, would you but, take you know, it or would you give it? Oh, would I take it? I'd take it. Hmm? Not now, I wouldn't take it. You could drag me into that ring with a, a damn pair of damn John Deere tractors. I wouldn't get in there. <laughs> but you know, taking a move like that, that says two things. The guy's good at it, and his opponent trusts him. See, when you take a – you could get hurt. In those turnbuckles, you could get hurt coming down. Gunther's not a little guy. 
he's probably 260. And that's a lot of weight. So that shows that he trusts his Sammy. Sammy knows how to do it. I'm glad Sammy brought it out because now the people who remembered him years ago in Ring of Honor, I guess that's where he used it. What was his name in Ring of Honor? El Generico. He was a, yeah. a mast. It was sort of like a spoof luchador kind of thing that he did for years. And he yeah, mainly was, featured it, Kevin it, Steen Owens. And it was it, it was good. But yeah, I, I think uh that says a lot for the regime and it says a lot for Sammy. Right, Dutch. Good. Are you ready to I'm gonna talk do it. about uh, some other stuff other than bloody WrestleMania? Okay, let's go. No, oh, hang on. Actually, we're going to talk more about WrestleMania. I had more notes uh, that was half awake, half asleep for LA, LA Knight versus AJ Styles over delivered. Uh, Jimmy versus Jay Uso was. I don't want to use the word appalling, but I mean, this is meant to be a grudge match, and it felt like neither of them had any kind of grudge with each other whatsoever. And plus, it's brothers fighting, and plus, they look exactly the same. It's like having a. It's like playing Street Fighter when you both pick the same character. They could save money by having them stand in front of a mirror. Yeah, and fight the mirror and have them have a match. Mm. Yeah, brothers fighting never really. They still like both these guys. Do you know who yeah. it worked with? Do you know who it worked with? Brett and Owen. That's because they're so different, and Owen played the it nasty worked. little brother to perfection. Like and they tried it with the Hardy Boys, it never worked. No one believes it. Well, nobody wants to see it, I don't think. Now, we have really kind of really praised WWE. I think this is one of their misses, but it, but it does give them a chance to move back into it and their uh, reunion. If they can make that something good, I think people tune in to see it. You know, I know you didn't watch this, so you'll have to, I'm sorry, take my word for it. But I was watching this match, and I actually thought of you. Because Why? When I, I, don't made... have a t I don't have a twin. <laughs> well, when, um, when I made the introduction video for the episode, I know you really liked it. And, and one of the clips was, it was a brawl between you and Jerry Lawler. And at the time, you were probably both in, what, you like, mid-40s. It was 97. And I was thinking, that brawl was, like, it had almost 0% build to it as comparison to the Usos. But the brawl was a million times more realistic. You actually fought. Or it looked like you were actually fighting. Whereas with Jimmy and Jay, it just looks like a choreographed pro wrestling match and there's no, like, grit to it. And then within two minutes, they were, it just was so slow. And then no one believed the ending. And then Jimmy... Whichever the good one win. I so what match win. was that with me and Lawler? It wasn't even a match. It was just a brawl, USWA, in like 96 or 97. On TV or in, on, in the arena? Studio. It was a studio taping. Okay. And, it, and I was just thinking, that's what that match needed. But the... Nah. He wasn't doing it for me. Anyway, um, Snoop Dogg's commentary was bizarre, uh, very amusing. There was a lot of swearing on the show, some bleeps, some like Pat McAfee just saying stuff on commentary and just got to get away with it. And many mentions of uh, the words pro wrestling and pro wrestling is back. But something else that you will have noticed since you watched all of uh, Sunday's WrestleMania, and I've got to say, Dutch, it's a rare miss from you. You said that Stephanie McMahon would never come back to WWE. You just had to bring that up, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, sorry. Just had to bring it up. Well, there is a reason to the rhyme. Okay. Because I think when you asked me, I think she had just been interviewed about that lady in Europe or Germany. At a U.S. Army base, yes, that had been that had been attacked by a doctor, and she reported it, but somehow the report didn't make it back to WWE headquarters, and that was delayed, or it was something wrong with her. And I thought they were going to try to say that she was uh, complicit in all these other things that Vince allegedly. There's that word again, allegedly had participated in. And I thought, uh, cover up. She, well, I thought she would be uh, more covered up and pushback. But then again, then I see her next to Triple H, and they must have uh, gotten through that point. 
So, yeah, I did say that I didn't think we'd see Stephanie there anymore. So, uh, just it was the Middle East rather than Europe, but um, it was Ashley Mazzara. No, wait a minute yeah. now. But she wasn't there as a uh, a representative of WWE. Who wasn't? Stephanie. Now, that's true. She's not been hired back in any capacity other than Ah, to... so now I'm redeeming myself a little bit, yeah. huh? Ah, but, yeah. Yeah, but we thought I should we have been a be lawyer. Back. I should have been a lawyer. She was there with her husband, and she goes back into regular people country, and because her husband was there, therefore, Stephanie follows. But she's not there as a representative or any kind of a uh, stamp from from WWE. Well, she she is representing WWE. I mean, she was in the ring and welcoming people to WrestleMania, but she's not been given back any kind of official job title or work or anything. I don't know this if this was mm -hmm. a one off or not. But uh, and and yeah. and this is my question: Does she need a job? No. I don't think she needs one. No. She's a billionaire. Why would she need? A job to fill her days. Well, maybe she's like Vince, was, just obsessed. This with is it. what I would suggest to Stephanie. Listen, go help little kids. Go help damn veterans on the street. Use your name and recognition to further something that will help people in the long run and who really need it. That's just my suggestion. She must have known a lot because this is what the third time that Stephanie McMahon has returned after Vince has gone because she like left and then Vince left and then she came back and then Vince came back and then she left or, or I should say she left and then two days later Vince came back and now Vince she has knew it gone all. forever and now she's coming back again so she must have known the lot. It's her father. It's a family affair too. You know her mama knew, her brother knew, everybody knew. That surrounded her knew they may not be telling her, but she knew. But she's not claiming, I don't think she has claimed yet that she didn't know of it. She has claimed that she wasn't aware. And I forgot what was said about the army, the army thing with that. Uh, what was the girl's name that ended uh, up? Ashley Mazzaro. Ashley Mazzaro. She hasn't really said that much to her other than plead uh, ignorance of the fact. And whether that's true or not, which I don't think it is, I think it's an excuse to cover her butt, uh, which in the long run, I cannot really blame her for, but I can blame her that Ashley Mazzaro ended up killing herself over that situation and nobody would help her. So, Stephanie, you you got that, you got that on your brain at night. So just think of that. So, and she's got kids too. So we'll see where that leads. I hope it leads to some kind of settlement with the Mazzaro family. Yes, yeah, she's got a young daughter, I believe. Um, we're going to move off that. We're going to uh, one more wrestling WrestleMania adjacent story. Dave Meltzer complains about Bubba Ray. Dudley. So, Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio a couple of days ago complained about Bubba Ray Dudley getting a surprise guest referee spot at WrestleMania 14 Night 2 Sunday, which uh, you saw, with Meltzer speculating that his appointment as guest referee was based on Bubba's appearances on Busted Open Radio and being anti-AEW. So, do you think that's why... Well, hell, I should have got a damn guest spot then. That's what I said. Yeah, you, Bubba, and yeah. Eric Bischoff should have I was anti-AEW. But, hey, let's be fair to ourselves. When AEW did something good, we said it was good. And when they did something kind of crappy, we looked at it. I'm looking at it like a fan. And you, usually when a wrestler looks at something and a fan looks at something, if it's the shits, it's the shits. There's no way to bounce around it and make it better just by watching it. So... So he said he got the spot by uh, being on Busted Open Radio. And what match did he get? He got the... Um, I can't remember the other guy's names. Uh, what's the one with Karrion Cross and the other guys? They're so See? forgettable. <laughs> no, they, they like put him in there to make something memorable about the match. He was the only... Right, what's that group with Karrion Cross in? And they're like... the 
there's like uh, uh, Judgment Day if you bought them off Timu. I have no idea, but I know who you're talking about. Karrion Cross and the girl and those other two guys. And they were against the what the... Uh, Bobby Lashley Hurt yeah. Business, Hurt Locker. I'm struggling. <laughs> you see, wrestle, see, that's why I didn't watch every match because it really wears me out to watch those matches like that because they're not over by now, those two teams. And something tells me if they put you on TV three times, four times, you should have more little zing than what they had. They had nothing. Authors of pain. They just oh, came God. back. Thing is, the only person who like has got like personality in that is Paul Ellering, and, a, and they don't even let him talk. <laughs> they don't even let him talk. They just he just out. stand there going, eh. and I'm thinking, wait a minute, Paul, why don't you didn't make your uh, reputation by walking down to the ring? I, uh, you said something, and maybe he can't say something now. I don't know, but I don't even know why they have him there. I mean, I, I, I applaud that he's there, but give him something to do. And, and if he can't do it, what's the need for him to be there? He's taken your spot as the oldest ever in, like on-screen like independent contractor kind of thing, ever, I think. Because it was you, and now I think yeah. it's Paul Ellering because he's 70 now. Oh, yeah, well, he's got it. He's got it. If he's 70 years old, walking out there. Anyway, do you think that that's the case? Do you think that WWE are rewarding Bubba Ray Dudley for being outspoken against AEW, or do you think it's just sour grapes? No, I think he probably called somebody that liked him. And he says, hey, Bubba Ray, somebody had an idea, and Triple H heard it one day. He said, I like it. Because he probably looked at the teams that he had in there and said, hell, nobody knows them. So what was the finish in that match? Did Bubba Ray get involved? Yeah, they all got the tables and stuff Good. like that. So, yeah. Good. He was the star. Bubba Ray was the star. Okay, uh, and, and he should have been. With Raw the next night, the enormous success of WrestleMania was followed by an enormous Raw television rating of 2.362 million viewers. That's the best since February 2020, and also 0. 0.83 in 18 to 49. That is the best since September 2019. All the more incredible considering the seismic shift in cable TV viewing habits, I mean, like in the four, past four or five years, at least 10 million households have cut the cord. So that's a huge achievement for uh, WWE. I cut, in that. I cut the cord. Oh, did you? I did it. I, I still got cable, but not at that price they wanted. What cord did you cut? Well, I, uh, I don't know. I just changed cable companies, I guess. Well, you didn't cut it's the cord. Not... <laughs> you just switched the cord. No, well, it was. Almost four hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. Yeah, then I cut it to like eighty eight dollars. Because listen, I don't, I don't watch other than HBO and some of those shows. That's the only thing. And maybe ESPN, maybe. And then you know, I, I watch the news, but I can't watch the news anymore because NBC, ABC, CBS, they're telling you the news as they want you to hear it. And that's not that's not a conspiracy theory. That's the truth. That's every so, that's every media outlet pretty much now. Well, everyone, even even Fox. So anyway, but I did cut my cut my cord, but I still got it. I, I got a uh, uh, Peacock. You whittled you whittled the cord down. I did. I got, it. I got um, it all the way down. So. At the end, at the beginning, it's like a 45-minute segment. Rock and Cody Rhodes face off. And we're not going to talk about the rest of it. A lot of it's just The Rock just standing there and just soaking up the sort of crowd booze and a few cheers. But at the end of it, you all right? No, I'm fine. Oh, okay. I'm looking for something. So, Lindor. Or have you got another chocolate now? No, I don't have any Lindor anymore. It's good. I don't like you tempting me with the Lindor. And if, in case you're tuning in, folks, I had a, a big... Uh, I guess a jar of Lindor candy and James went nuts for them. He wanted me to fly over there and give it to him real quick, but I couldn't No, but I was, I was looking for something else. I don't know where it is. Well, ah, but, well, well oh, maybe, it is. It's, maybe it's the same thing that, the rock, oh, the cigar, maybe it's the same thing that the rock 
was going to, was giving Cody Rhodes. So at the end of this interview. So I saw that segment. Yeah. So okay. Uh, what do you make of it? And what well, do you think it I'm going to advise WWE to cut this going to the ring down and just standing in the ring looking at each other. Cut it down in time because people get anxious to see what they're going to say. Get into it. Do something. Say something. And Rock dragged it out and dragged it out and dragged it out. And the crowd stayed with him because this is a first for them. Of course, it's a first for the TV viewers too. And they had this discussion, but really nothing ever came out of it. There was no physical touching. There was no punching, kicking, people running in. The crux of the matter is Rock said he had to go away for a little while. And and Cody looks like a village idiot standing there. And he's looking there and, and he's doing his nose. I don't know what the hell that means. But he said, I want to give you something. And he actually give it to him in his hand. He said, the mere feel of this in your hand, you'll know what it is. Which makes everybody think, well, what is it? You know, wh wh what could it be? Pubes, like a, all of the rocks. Pubes, that you, you know what this is. And just... Pubes. <laughs> yeah. What do you think it was? No, that I've given my answer. What do you think it is? Well, just for the <laughs> lack of a better answer, I'd say it's a a clock ticking down to when he gets back, and you you could you could tell a, a clock in your hand just for the size of it. It'd be a round watch or something. Or I heard that it could have been the watch that Dusty pawned to send him to acting school, mm. which is a little hokey, to tell you the truth. But it'll work. And for Rock to go out of his way to track that watch down, it actually says a lot. But to think, the thing about Rock, he goes over every part of that interview thinking in his head, is this believable? He's telling a story. And every part he adds to that story has to be believable. That would be believable. Or just to watch would be believable. But we'll see where it goes. The same watch. How would you track that down from a pawn shop 20 don't years ago? Don't tell earlier? me. I don't know. He's the rock. He can do anything. <laughs> same <laughs> with the rock with his anything. fabulous PI sources could do anything. Yeah, he, he, he can track it down. So, but he did. He, he, see the story about the watch, Dusty pawned the watch, correctly? Yes, and apparently Cody didn't know this from until after Dusty had died. That yeah, he'd pawned the watch for this. And who told him? His mother. I figure so. Yeah, mm -hmm. someone in the family. But um, this would have been around the time that you were working with Dusty in TNA, I guess. Hmm. Really? Hmm. Is that when he went? When who went? Who are we talking about? Dusty. Uh, Dusty. Uh, Cody. Oh, Cody. Uh, no, when Cody. did he supposedly go to acting school? He did go to acting school. It didn't work out. I think he must have tried to start wrestling around 2006 or something like that. You know why his acting school didn't work out? Go on. Because he's a shitty actor. <laughs> That's why. I mean, he can play certain parts, but... And Cody, they all told this story ar around Cody, but I don't think he got it all on his own. They built the whole story around him. But if I saw him in a story where he had the lead and he had to carry the lead, I think they'd lose me. Because I only see one, I only see one side of of Cody, the concern side and the the the, the personal side. That's all I see. So I don't think he would be that great an actor. But in this case, you know, he didn't have to be because they did all the work for him. So, let's move on to more WWE stuff now. Vince McMahon's longtime personal trainer, Michael Mountfort, posted on Instagram uh, during WrestleMania, I think, complaining that Vince was not able to attend WrestleMania in any capacity over the weekend. 
So here's the quote. How quickly people forget that without his vision, there would be no wrestling or WrestleMania. Sadly, when a person is down, the people who say they love you turn their backs on you. So. Well, there's a little bit of truth in there. Without Vince, they may not have been a WrestleMania. They never been this juggernaut of a company like WWF or WWE. It was Vince's vision that drove that. And how how soon they forget that he was the the one who started it all and without him there would be no WWF or E. But you know I think what's his name? This uh, Michael Mountfort is his person. Well, long Michael time. Mountfort, I think you're forgetting all the times he's been charged with sexual assault <laughs> and uh, like trafficking young women. And I think, did you just miss this whole story that just went by us? I mean, that's what he's known for. And now he's out and... I don't think that's totally what Vince did. I think he did it at the right time. I got my conspiracy theories about this. I think uh, Endeavor or TKO, they knew about this like a year ago at least. And oh. they took that information and just kept it quiet. And they were going to bring it out. At the right time. Now, why do you think Nick Khan went into WWE for? Well, he as went a spy. in 2020. Okay, but they could have, uh, but he's worked for TKO, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's uh, okay. very high up in so, TKO now, yeah. Okay, so he's, and they probably said, listen, this is what we thinking about doing. And they said, Vince is going to be hard to move. So since he owns most of the, what, sellable stock, I think, tradable stock, I forgot what he, he owned. So they need him out of the way, and Nick Khan went to work on it. And that's why it all conveniently fell before the changeover. Mm-hmm. And TKO, if they'd have known this, or if Vince had known this, that the company would be as good as it was, I think he may not have sold. But he, he thought in his head, because he's tired, he is really, really tired. He's doing three shows a week and delegating the rest of it. Multiple threesomes a week and, as well. And, and he, <laughs> That's exhausting. And he was... He was, and he would show up at the show. So he, so he got tired, but I think he knew about it. Everybody knew about it. Of course, Vince knew all about his stuff too. And you know who else has made an appearance at WrestleMania that we, I thought was gone. Hmm. Bruce Pritchard. No, no, no. He was brought straight out front and center and given huge credit for Cody's return. Sure was. Done. So. Now I have to go back. <laughs> hey, I'm just surmising anyway, because that's the that's the depth of the show. Yes, because he oh, yeah. he had been really really quiet, and he was Vince's right hand man for years and years and years, and except for the time when he when Vince kicked him out and he went to TNA. You know, the, that lasted about what nine years or something like that. That. Massive How gap. long was he gone from WWE? Yeah, about nine years, like 2008 until maybe 2018 or something right. like that. He was gone a very long time. I didn't uh, think he was gone that long. But yeah. oh, well, uh, uh, b b uh, before we go down the uh, Bruce Pritchard thing, because we actually talked about him last week. In fact, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reread the thing that Michael Mountfort wrote. It said without Vince McMahon's vision, I'm paraphrasing, there would be no wrestling. Now this is the guy who was the personal trainer or yeah. massager event no he wasn't the he wasn't the masseuse the physical therapist that was another that was another incident okay but it's just like like this dude clearly doesn't want to know what he's talking about because he's claiming that vince mcmahon essentially invented wrestling it's like that's mm -hmm. not true wrestling would exist yeah without vince would it have been as big who knows yeah but you know he doesn't know much about that and then the other thing is 
the people who say, sorry, the people who say they love you turn their backs on you. And I thought, with Vince, well, he was telling Janelle Grant, in fact, earlier that day, that he loved her, and then it, it, on the fateful day, and then not to be too crass, Vince turned his back on Janelle Grant, allegedly dropped Trow, squatted over her, and shat on her head. It's like, that's... Like, where's the turning you know, back here? That would have been my first indication <laughs> that maybe my relationship with this person. <laughs> yeah, it was a little one-sided. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's not good, and I need to get out of it. It's like, it's like this dude, and, and, and this guy's saying, don't judge, this is after, don't judge a man without getting all the facts. Things aren't as always as they appear. Well, this guy doesn't even know that wrestling existed outside Vince McMahon. What facts does he have that we don't? Well, how many times have, has he heard of a man squatting down over a woman's head and, and doing that to her? Well, apparently I, I've never. never. Really, i probably heard of it before, but I've never seen it. Do we have any video of this? No, I think that's against YouTube's guidelines. Okay. To show that kind yeah. of thing. I don't put too much stock in that guy. No, well, you know, uh, you see there's a photo of him in Vince McMahon and he appears as stupid as he looks and he's a proper meathead-looking guy as well. Okay, um, the other thing we need to mention is also TK has bought back another $311 million worth of TKO stock back from Vince McMahon, giving Vince now just under 5% of total ownership of TKO. So this means that there are few or no disclosure requirements of any of Vince McMahon's future TKO stock transactions as long as the ownership stays below 5%. Um, we're going to skip a couple of bits of news now. I'm going to go straight on to Triple H, and then we're going to get on to sort of the main event kind of thing, AEW, uh, and the CM Punk thing. So Triple H on part-timers. On an interview with Pat McAfee, he uh, reiterated that he was retiring. And then Triple H seemingly took a shot at people who think that they can take on WWE responsibilities and be a star in WWE because they've had success in lesser promotions, as well as those who don't want to work a full schedule. Here's the quote. Because they, or the wrestlers, he doesn't name them, succeed someplace else doesn't mean they'll succeed at the big time. How many players go from college football at a high level and fail in the NFL? It's massive. It's a different game, a different world. If they are not here to be all in on this, when I see people coming out and trying to make it and then they pick a job where, well, they work less, the schedule is lighter, then I'm like, I'm glad I didn't get you. If you're not in it for the grind at that point early in your career, you have no business being here in WWE. Now, who was he sending that to? That's a good question, because I hadn't put two and two together, but a lot of people have put two and two together, and we don't know if they got the right answer or not, but they're suggesting Will Ospreay. And why? Because Will turned down a WWE contract to go to AEW, and with WWE, you'll be working three times a week with AEW, once a week, but also it allows Will Ospreay to still live in the UK, and he just flies in every week. That, that's too complicated for me. I think Will Ospreay, yeah, he could do good if he went to WWE, and they told a story about him. Otherwise, he's just a guy out there doing flip-flops, and after a while, he, he gets old. It gets really, really old. It's not all about the wrestling. That's why I hate to be with some people in this end. Yeah, but that wrestling, it was a six-star match. Now I'm thinking, well, you know, you could say that Romans and Cody's was a seven-star match because of the anticipation. And they didn't do anything very complicated at all. Nothing. But yet... The people were there to the end saying, we want to see the finish. We want to see the finish. And when the finish come, they exploded. So for anybody to even try to pick that apart, you know, it's like, you know, I, I don't know. It, 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 can't, it can't be done. It can be done if you want to nitpick it. But they, they did it right. People were happy. And now they can uh, latch on to that and go forward to the next week, which they already have. And they're still running. I so I wonder if I wonder if Triple H is referring to Will Ospreay, but uh, from what I understand, Will Ospreay got a great deal from Tony Khan. He was getting a million dollars plus per year, and plus 
he gets to a stay. A million home. dollar a year. I thought, and he he don't want to go to WWE. No, AEW's paying him seven figures a year now. To, uh, but the thing to, is, to stay home. Well, that's what I'm getting at because the lighter uh, schedule for Will means that he doesn't have to be. He may not even have to be in the US every week. But now he doesn't have to pull his family out, of, you know, his kids out of school. He doesn't have to move his wife and stuff like that. And I don't think that's fair to criticize someone for putting their family first in that instance. Well, if he was talking about him, he got his answer. Actually, it doesn't mean much to me. But I don't think he would send that whole message just to Will Offspring. No, I don't think so either. I, I, there's something more there. Then I, I think he'd be sending it more to Tony Khan. Could, would that even fit? Well, Tony's busy enough. He's very incredibly busy. He's not staying home. But, I mean, a lot of people in AEW don't appear every week, even if they're required to fly to the events, you know, that kind of thing. It is a part-time as promotion. I'm going to have to read up and see what he meant by this because he lost me on this one. I don't know who he's talking about. So <clears throat> let's assume, and apparently Will Ospreay believes it was aimed at him. So on AEW Dynamite yesterday, uh, Will Ospreay and Rene Paquette are doing an interview on the ramp. Uh, very briefly, AEW did some really good production for an interview for once, because instead of like the backstage where they're on like a roadie case or something like that, which is like I've seen so many of them, they look terrible. They did this on the ramp. And then in the background, all the fans. So it looked like an odd WWF Superstars taping. So the production was far better. For it, it still looked terrible. Oh, God. It was nowhere near as bad as the. Compared to Bucks. WWE standards. Yeah. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask AEW, do you have any backstage lights at all? <laughs> Why don't you go down to damn Western Auto and buy some flashlights? Yeah, do something. Just, just do that with your phone. Yeah. Just have a bunch of people stand there with that. That would be an improvement. Well, but it was so dark, and the people judge you by that. Raw is not dark. You can say that for him. So, in this interview, Will feels Triple H was aiming at him. And then Osprey essentially says that Triple H has no right to criticize people like Will for not embracing the grind, as they say. And because Triple H only got to where he is in the business because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. Well, I heard, oh, this is about something else, but only your insiders get that. Grinding on the boss's daughter, that's been, that joke is 20 years old. 25 years old. Yeah, um, 20, years and years. And did it make him a smart ass? No, it made damn Triple H a billionaire. So if you could grind on a boss's daughter and end up being a billionaire, yeah, I might have to give that some serious consideration myself. Also keep in mind that before he started dating Stephanie McMahon, Triple H was already a three-time WWF champion. So I think he was well on his way without Stephanie in uh, that sense. Maybe not in the office uh, capacity, but anyway. But that's not the biggest news from AEW and AEW Dynamite this week. The big news is... The CM Punk, Jack Perry backstage fight was aired. Uh, very, I'm very sorry. Just before we go to it, I'm not showing the video of this because Don They're Stevens. Sued for it. Yeah, well, exactly. Don Stevens and Aubrey Edwards, right, which are the same person, have been copyright claiming people on Twitter for reposting the footage that they aired on AEW Dynamite for all to see. So even though we would have the right and any copyright claim, I would win. It's just not worth the hassle to re-show it because I'd like to go in forensic detail, but I'm sorry we're, we're not going to show it just because it's such a hassle. You watched it. What did you see? Well, I think it backfired in Tony's face. It backfired in AEW's face and all of their faces because what... Uh, CM Punk has been saying for months and months and months, it's what I saw. And nobody swung first. I don't think there was any swinging there at the beginning. It was just that CM Punk grabbed him for being a smart ass. I can see that. 
And then said, get the hell away from me. And Samoa Joe moved in to separate them, as he said. And then at the end, uh, I think he went back around the corner uh, where, where, uh, where the go position was or the the people they control the, the c- control the show to where Tony was and said something to him there that took less than 10 seconds. And then he came back around. I don't see the big deal about this. What did the, what did the Bucks say about it? Ah, well, they were trying to weave it into the story on AEW Dynamite that uh, the Bucks were not on in their right frame of mind when they lost to FTR later that evening. So they're trying to they're, they're weaving the work and the and the reality into it. So they're saying that well, we lost to FTR because we had to put our EVP hats on, and we were dealing with the backstage situation with CM Punk, and that was their sort of justification for Tony Khan airing this video. Just so happened to be after CM Punk on the MMA Hour talks about more or less exactly what happened anyway. Um, Tony Khan actually explained his decision to air the video maybe last week. I didn't get a date on this. After previously admitting he wanted to broadcast the security footage as early as late last year by saying the decision is based on putting on the best show for AEW, as well as driving interest for Dynamite and our Dynasty pay-per-view on April 21st, said Khan. This is real-life footage that affected many people and it will air it for the first time on TBS during Dynamite. Which is a load of crap. He aired it because he was butthurt for one reason or another. Well, that's all he's got is that. And he has a, a reasoning for it. It doesn't, it doesn't really fit on inspection. It doesn't fit what he said. But not anything good comes out of this. It's already between punk. Punk is gone. He's done high, high skied out of town. And the Bucks are talking about FTR trying to tie them in it, but there's no, there's nothing there to do it. See, the story is loose, very, very Spe- loose, specious, specious, <laughs> oh, tenuous, I like that. and yeah. there's, there's nothing there. So I'm looking at it without sound, and I'm saying, and the crowd was, I, I heard the crowd looking at it without sound, and they were just sitting there. I think Punk is the baby face. I think they cheered him. And now they're, that is a prime example of a company or a, a boss knee jerking. He wanted to play this a, a, nine months ago or whenever it was, but he didn't. Now, there's a reason he didn't play it because it don't show nothing. And I'm sure somebody told him that, and it just didn't work out. Now, what is the what is the lawsuit that they they can be sued for showing that? No, they can't. So, no one signed a non disclosure agreement for this. The lawsuit stems from the brawl out thing with CM Punk and the Young Bucks. So, no one signed any non disclosure agreements for this, and apparently, apparently, it's legal to show it. It's uh, within the public interest, I guess. But I watched it and I was like, was that it? This is it. And he showed it on TV. What what are the what are the comments today are they having on that showing? Well, do you know, I've been I've been looking at various people's comments on Twitter to, to try and gauge. Some people are seeing what they want to see. Saying yeah. Yeah, this proves that CM Punk's a liar. None of no, it basically proves there's one bit. <laughs> There's one bit towards the end that is uh, up for debate. I'll tell you what, right? Uh, and I'll go through that in a minute with you, and then you can tell me what you saw or if you think you saw it differently. Very briefly beforehand, did you see the face of Tony Schiavone before they threw to the video? Yes, I did. I did. What do you think? Oh, yeah. It was just like, he knows you don't bring this up. This is in house dirt that if you show it to your neighbor, or across the street, they're gonna they're gonna look at you like you're the one that's damn causing all the problems, not CM Punk. And it backfired, in my opinion, it backfired on Tony, backfired on AEW, and I know Tony. Tony's a good guy. 
but he saw no purpose in this and no benefit of it. And his face reflected that, that, uh, that desire. Yeah. So we'll go through the entire thing. I'm sorry. I have to do it verbally rather than show it. I'd love to show it anyway. Uh, the young butts introduced the footage by saying Jack Perry is lovable and the other guy, CM Punk, may have been put up to attacking Perry by FTR. So they are trying to at least weave some sort of story. No one's buying it, of course. So they're trying to um, uh, do it that way. And then the books... Wait, but they said that Punk should be what? Oh, they, they said that maybe Punk was put up by FTR to attack Perry to get in the heads of the Young Bucks kind of thing. I mean, as I say, no. it's real. It's real. That's tenuous. the Young Bucks making them more important than they really are. Yes. <laughs> so, Bucks lose to FTR. I've already said this. So, um, uh, Bucks also describe it within the, the preview of this video as a high school scrap, which it basically is. I mean, anyone who's been to high school has seen better fights. It's than not, this. hell, it's not that damn highly elevated. It's not even that. So, here are the notes from the video. Samoa Joe, Hook, Don Stevens, Jerry Lynn, among others, are in the back. There's TV monitors to the right of shot. With Tony Khan, I think Chris Hero is sat at Gorilla. He's wearing the pink T-shirt that he comes out towards the end. Sam Punk walks into shot and talks with Perry, who's not really saying too much, but his hands are on his hips. And then he's tousling and messing with his hair. A couple of people wander toward Punk and Perry just to stand close and, you know, just a couple of people realising something might happen straight away. Jack tousles his hair one more time and says something to Punk. Punk then shoves Perry with, I believe, one hand, uh, maybe his left, and then he snatches Perry's head with both hands straight in for an attempted guillotine, whether he actually choked him or not or just attempted to. Uh, that's not quite sure. But anyway, a referee's trying to break it up, and then Samoa Joe comes over. Samoa Joe is pacing back and forth to the left. As soon as he sees it, he dives straight in. Uh, Samoa Joe grabs Perry while talking to, uh, 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 but he's also talking to Punk at the same time. And Joe either wrenches Perry free or convinces Punk to let go, maybe both. So that's the only bone of contention that I can see is that some say that Samoa Joe saved Perry. Others say uh, Punk suggested that Samoa Joe told him to stop and Punk did. So uh, of those two theories, did you think uh, Samoa Joe talked Perry out of it or he physically rescued him? Said he, he talked punk out of it. Yeah, well, you're sort of doing both at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Well, I think he was, it happened so quick. I think he put his hand in there and he's trying to say, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, and if he'd tried to do it, they may have, he may have uh, inter intervened further. Wait a minute, where'd my deal go here open? Is that it? Yeah, there well, it is. You can still hear me. So, I, I, I'll, I'll, yeah, I lose myself all the time when I do that. But yeah, it, it was not, it was a nothing burger. Nothing. <laughs> nothing um, happened. And if he'd have wanted to hurt him, he could have hurt him badly. Well, if he'd have got that what they call a front chancellor, and he went south on it. Go, he could have broke his neck if he wanted to. Yeah, well, let me tell you this, right? So, uh, right, Punk has said. I'll get to the rest of the notes in a minute. Punk has said, you know, I thought it was doing the professional thing by choking him out, which is also a silly comment. That's not the professional thing to do. Professional thing. Yeah, no. But the but thing I, is, I do like I do like that comment. <laughs> I was doing the professional thing by not kicking his ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, is that the one thing that Punk could have done, and even though he was, you know, the worst UFC fighter of all time, he's still trained. He had time to shove him. He had time to grab his head with both hands and wrench him down, which means he had more than enough time to just punch him in the face. Yeah. So he didn't punch him in the face and break his nose. He or he didn't want to punch him. Yeah. Or he would have punched him. And I think by him punching, he would be the instigator. He'd be the asshole. I mean, he still is. But, he, but... if he even, if he had a punched him and they went and they sued him for assault, where was this in London? When did this happen? Yeah. 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 If they would went in front of a magistrate or whatever you call one of those judges, you know what the judge would have done? Get the hell out of here. A misdemeanor. Well, you would yeah, say misdemeanor. No, it wouldn't even be a misdemeanor. It's wrestling. He says, get the hell out of here. I'm not even lowering the standards of my court by even ruling on this. You do this all the time. Why don't you damn go now to every magistrate you come across and, and file these charges? He said, case dismissed, bam, send them out. It would have gone under common assault, which is basically the worst you're going to get is you're going to spend an evening 
in jail and then let out and then given community service or something. You're not going to get much for anything like that. So, well, they wouldn't even got that. Oh, no, no, no. They would have yeah. got a dismissed case, period. Get out. So, as the uh, combatants are separated, monitors are disturbed, and then Tony Khan reaches over to straighten them. You can actually see his arm and his head, I think, anyway. And then Punk then goes to Khan's direction and what looks to be pointing and yelling at Khan before yelling something to Perry. Now, this would be the thing where Punk said, you're a clown, you're whatever, this is a joke. It's I a clown quit. show. Yeah. Uh, Punk walks off with Malachi Black and uh, Chris Hero uh, and uh, as Jer- uh, Jerry Lynn checks on Tony Khan. Or I might have got that backwards, I don't know. Anyway, the only thing I can't tell is if Punk... Now, when they're separating in the fight, I don't know if CM Punk is trying to swing for Jack Perry after Samoa Joe pulls Jack Perry away, or he's basically pointing at him like that. And the reason I'm not sure about this, some people say, well, he's punching him. CM Punk was stepping backwards at the time. You don't punch well, someone if when you, you go if you have you. If you have a problem identifying what he was trying to do, a judge would have the same problem. You'd err on the side of cur- caution, of course. Yeah, and it's like, it's something that happened that should have happened. So I'm not involved in the court in it. Because they got other important things to do. Where's the benefit to AEW in all this? Is there any no, anywhere? No, no, none. Got their name out there a little bit, but they got their name out there in such a way that nobody even wants to hear about them. With, um, I mean, it, it shows CM Punk being a dick. I mean, he did instigate the fights. I mean, I mean, physically at least. We don't know what Perry said. He obviously said something. But... I mean, pretty much everyone believed that this is how it happened anyway, and people, all this does is just reaffirm their opinions of CM Punk or Jack Perry anyway. It's just not swayed anyone. No, it hadn't swayed me. Well, I think a Punk was already pissed off by the way he was being treated, and he thinks that they weren't listening to him after they give him this gaga, we're going to do all this stuff. And it was my assumption, impression, that they even got the show on what other net network did it got? Disney? Oh, or, no, uh, no, no, no. Warner, Warner TNT. Brothers? No, it's TBS and TNT collision. Okay. It's still within the Warner. Is it because of Punk? And yet at the same time, I think this is what I think. I think the, the Bucks, they were resenting him. And the rest of them were resenting him, and he started resenting. It may have been double resentment time, but he got tired of dealing with it. But by the same token, CM Punk is not hes not an idiot. He had already laid plans for his WWE reintroduction, and he was had to be pretty, pretty sure about that, and that's why he did it. So I don't think it's hurt him at all. I don't think it really hurt AEW. I don't think anybody has, well, you could have a a lesser viewpoint on AEW now than you did. But I don't. It's just they don't know what they're doing. I actually kind of feel sorry for them because they're in waters they don't know, and they don't even know how to swim. If they get a good television rating... Does it mean anything? It might mean that they want to see that okay. if they got a good television rating at all. That's just to see what they did. It's not up yet, is it? Oh, it's been on Twitter and stuff. No, but, but, no, it, it but, was yesterday. but the rating. Oh, the, the rating. rating. No, no, no. This uh, we, we record this on a Thursday afternoon in, in my case. I think it's Thursday afternoon or evening in your time zone when it comes out, so it'll be too late for us to know. Too late or too early? It we're, should be out here. We're t- we're too early. It'll co- it'll come out in a few hours after we start recording. Um, at which point was Tony Khan meant to be scared for his life? That that baffles me. I, that wasn't the way I was raised. If a guy was coming at me, I don't give a crap how big he is or how bad he is. He's not going to scare me into fearing for my life. He might scare me that he beat my ass, but 
still, I would, I would defend myself. You have to. I don't care. See, Tony grew up in a sheltered environment, highly sheltered, because when your dad's a millionaire and he's got all these things going on all over the world, and Tony, you can tell by looking at him, he grew up pampered as hell, got everything he wanted. And how old is Tony? Uh, early 40s, I think, 40, 41. Has he ever been married? I don't think so. I don't think he's married, no. Does he have a girlfriend? I don't, I've not read his diary. I, d I don't know. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, you know, no. you, can, you, you can tell a lot by that because of how, how he's lived his life. So I don't know, but I would not have admitted that I was scared for my life. There's, um, I'm just trying to look at his Wikipedia, say if he's married or not. I can't tell. Um, there's also a bit. Okay, if you look at his Wikipedia page mm -hmm. and you can't tell that he's married, he's not married. No. Let me just check. No. Is that a pretty good assumption? I think it's a fairly good assumption. I don't think he's married. Thank I mean, you. but yeah, but if I was a billionaire, I'd be porking away for the rest of my life. Be great. Wouldn't well. I mean, I, I find him a very interesting person, Tony. But I think he got into a business that he doesn't realize is a business and he doesn't realize how much backstabbing goes on behind his back. And he has just cloaked himself in this owning a wrestling company and dealing with the networks and but yet, how many people you know that is the head of a company, a wrestling company, and still does the booking of it by himself, kind of? Vince had help. Vince had people helping him all these years. Years ago, Pat Patterson and, and, and all those guys were right underneath Vince. But now he's trying. And Pat Patterson had a lot more experience than any of these guys have. See, booking is an art form, and I, I and I, I totally, I, I'm totally aware that what works now uh, works then uh, doesn't work now. But you have to, you have to uh, clip it, you have to carve it, you got to shape it and mold it to where it works. Now I'm watching The Rock; he is a believer, and I think Stone, uh, I mean uh, Triple H too. And tell him this story and let the time build. And they don't have to work angles every week. Their angles are work. Now they'll take the strongest angle they have and really put some steam on it. And then they can run for another six months. This is the way you want a wrestling booking, uh, a wrestling booking committee to work like this. Because I, I went in there on booking committees and sat down and said, I, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do because all the other guys, and then sometimes they'd be 10 people on it. Some people, sometimes three. But even with three, I had an idea where I wanted to go. But with 10, you know, I, 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 I didn't have a clue. Because I think if I had an idea and it went around the table, and I've done this, went around the table. When he come back to me, it was totally changed from the way it started. Chinese whispers going around. And, yeah, because you, yeah. You, you, went, you went through 10 sources to get back to where you were even not close to. So that's another, that's another round of, around the table. Also, keep in mind that Tony's booking himself with some help here and there. But he's mostly, he's the head booker while also being an executive for Fulham Football care. Club and Jacksonville Jaguars. See, booking, you should have help with your main stuff. The other stuff really doesn't matter that much. Well, he's just like, what, what did Dusty and JJ do? Dusty did the main events. JJ yep. did everything else. Same with that's Kevin it. Sullivan uh, later on. That's, and that's, that's, that's the way they did. Because, but I always had my eye on the underneath guys saying, hey, I don't know when I might be able to have to bring this guy up. So I'm not going to kill him here. Might beat him. And let's look at a choice example from WWE style, Sami Zayn. How many weeks did he go that he got beat every week? Many. 
And, but still, he was over. He was over because he was with the bloodline. But he wasn't over because of his matches that he was winning. But he was so good, you couldn't miss it. They at least didn't miss that on Sammy. And, and they got it right on him. Now we see that he's the uh, Intercontinental Champion, having defeated Gunther, which is, if I had a bet, I would have lost my bet. I would have bet there's not a chance in hell that Sammy can beat Gunther. But it's not a bad thing. It is a good thing. Who sound like, um, who said that? That's not a bad thing. That's I did. That's a good thing. No, it was, it was another wrestler who said it as well. Anyway, I can't remember. Uh, it wasn't Dallas Page, was it? Yes, it was Dallas know. Page. It was Dallas Page. It's um, not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. right, we're going to harp on this a tiny bit more, then we'll move on to a couple more bits of news, and then we will shut up shop as it is. Um, it's been, what, seven months, eight months? Eight months, I think. Jack Perry. Now you've seen the video. And also keep in mind that, you know, for the second glass spot at All In Wembley, you know, a car was provided for him. I suggest that, you know, the move to use the windscreen in the front of the car was greenlit by somebody. And then, you know, he goes and says that it's real glass, crime a river. At least the rest of it, I imagine, was greenlit or, you know, that kind of thing. But he's been either suspended, he's been suspended for, what, six months? And then... Uh, maybe longer than that. And then he's in New Japan for two months in the worst group New Japan's had in, in decades. Is Jack Perry being overpunished for all this, or does he deserve the cold shoulder that Tony's giving him? Well, I think he was insubordinate, my opinion. Because if it started about the glass, then it ends with the glass. Nobody told him to say, as a glass, cry me a river. Nobody told him to send that. Nobody told him to say that. And he took that on his own, and he was given free airtime to say it, yet said something like that. I don't blame CM Punk for getting mad. Here's a guy that he couldn't draw you a, a, a goddamn stick figure, really. And he's out there taking it upon himself and being a smart ass. And if CM Punk was supposed to be running it, wait a minute, they'd need some discipline somewhere. Because if you don't give them discipline, they will do exactly what they want to do when they want to do it. It's called the inmates running the asylum. And I've never seen a territory go long when you don't have any uh, power structure or anybody leading the company. Still, though, six to eight months, is that enough? And he should be brought back. I mean, it seems like they're bringing him back. I don't know why. Well, they can bring him back if they want to. I don't know why. But you'd, you'd be happy to just dust your hands off and just go. Yeah, I would. Yeah. They want to bring him back, bring him back. It doesn't concern me. I don't think the fans would. Oh, they may like him because he's got a lot of publicity since he's been gone out of the ring. Which. What's a kid weigh? 160 pounds? Something, 170? Something like that. I mean, that's, well, the a, that's the point, though. So you've shown a video. So you've shown uh, CM Punk beating up Jack Perry easily right i mean like completely yeah. dominating that brief skirmish uh so you've made cm punk look strong you've made uh, jack perry look weak you can't have the two feud because they're in different companies so now jack perry just turns up if he does come back to aw all he, what's he, he's just he's a little bitch who cm punk has punked out on camera that aw <laughs> themselves showed it's like yeah, it's, what, what's doing perry the no no good at all here no <laughs> What are they going to bring him back on at what platform and for what and for what level? Who is going? Who's he mad at? CM Punk is gone. That's the main deal. So is he mad at the at the Bucks or what? I don't think that'd go anyway. I don't see nothing that's going to work for AEW right now. I think they're they have hit the epitome of effing up, and I think it's now telling the. It's telling a story on them. Oh, yeah, they're always going to have their faithful. You're always going to have those people that are watch wrestling, any kind of wrestling at all. But they're not getting excited about it. WWE had the same thing, except when they started telling a story. They got a few more people watching, then a few more, then a lot more, and then it kind of built 
onto itself. They're up a half million viewers since what, six months ago? Mm. Uh, it's, eight it's eight tough months? To, it's tough to say because of NFL and basketball and stuff like that. You know, it fluctuates up and down. But for at least the next few weeks, it'd be good to see them do, you know, two million plus on Raw. Mm. And yep. SmackDown has been on, on a high as well. Which is a shame for Fox, because it's one of the few shows that's booking the trend of sliding ratings, and now you know they're going to Fox. Uh, sorry, uh, Netflix. Excuse me. Right, a couple more bits of news, then we're going to go. Tony Khan firing people. We talked about this last week, but uh, you know, never uh, fired. He never fired me. Are you a secret double agent for Tony Khan? I am. Yeah, I'm sitting in the back seat of the of the limousine one time, and he <laughs> said something. I said, "Let me tell you something, Tony." You might tell your little minions out there that you're not telling me that. So I reached over and just drew my hand back like I was going to hit him. He started crying. <laughs> he feared for his life. I said, no. I said, Tony, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just kidding anyway. But, you know, I think Tony is, and I, I, I like him. I met him one time. I like him. I'm just making a joke about him. But, man, grow some balls and handle that group. Well, he did to a point for the first time. So a couple of, you know, less than two weeks ago, he did a mass firing, you know, like WWE yep. used to do. Fired 10 people. Anyway, a few people, you know, said how disappointed they were. I think one said he probably wasn't going to pursue wrestling anymore after that. So, but a tag team. Who said they weren't going to pursue wrestling? I can't remember. It was Well, a week. there's a reason for that because they're the shits. Yeah, well. And they can't get a job. Yeah, most likely. Uh, but the uh, there's a tag team out there called The Boys. Uh, they are asso associated with Dalton Castle in Ring of Honor. So, therefore, they're on Ring of Honor. Therefore, barely anyone's watching them. But they were dropped by Tony Khan before Ring of Honor's biggest show of the year, Supercard of Honor. And this seems to come out of left field because Dalton Castle had a match on the show. And the boys were meant to interfere, I suspect, on the show. You know, they're meant to be part of the show. Then they get fired. Tony Khan says that they were fired for missing shots, which is the uh, cardinal sin of professional wrestling. You cannot miss something you're advertised for. But here's the thing. The boys came out and said, yes, we missed that show, but we were given the runaround by, AEW, uh, by the office in AEW, the uh, booking department, saying that we wanted a change from like Hendersonville to Nashville. I've lost where I am in the thing, so I'm just doing this off the top of my head or the opposite way around. And then, it was Knoxville to Nashville. Knoxville to Nashville, there you go. And they just they were given the runaround, so they didn't hear back from AEW, so they assumed they were off the show. And I thought, reading that, well, you should have followed up. And yeah, they did. you should have. They sent reams of text messages, reams of emails to different people in different departments in AEW, trying to clarify if they were going to the show and if they were, which airport are they flying out to? And then the next thing they know, they're fired. It's like, what's, what's going that on? That may be a little bit of a, a legal deal if they have all the paper to back up that they did try to contact people and yet nobody, nobody told them. So what are they to believe? I believe the boys. I saw yeah, well, a lot I think, of paperwork. Uh, well, I, I think I would, I would seek a, a legal remedy there. You like that word remedy? I like a remedy. Uh, Tony Khan publicly stated uh, his issues with allowing talent to take third-party bookings as well, so this is something different. Uh, there's a double-edged sword here. When we book independent shows, injuries can happen, and there's a risk to that. And they can affect the wrestler's career, and frankly, here in AEW, it changes our plans. Or in Ring of Honor, it can change our plans when the talent get injured here. And by the same token, it changes our plans when people get injured on the outside. The reason I'm bringing this up is because one of the fired wrestlers, Anthony Henry, who is mostly featured on Ring of Honor, caught a broken jaw working an indie event and ended up as one of the 10 AEW working talent in casualties. In, working an India event or an India event? Independence wrestling event. <laughs> okay, I thought you said India. No, he wasn't wearing I a said, well, hell, he, like should, he should have been stomped from taking that shot. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he works an independent wrestling event and then gets a broken jaw. Uh, where do you stand on this? Tony Khan lets it happen, but then he fires somebody if they get injured. Well, you, you can't do that. You're either going to pick it up the whole time or you're not. So just say they can't work indie shots. And if they get hurt, well, that's according to what he's paying them to. If he's paying them to not, if he's paying them well enough to not make the indie shot, yeah, they shouldn't make it. But, and Tony has a point here too. I'm on, 
if you get hurt on the Indy shot, we're not responsible. And I agree with that too, but you allowed them to take it and they get hurt. So I don't know how you root on that. Well, they need to, they need to revisit that and come up with another rule. We've, uh, we've already told the story. It's in the archives, but you had the similar thing in Puerto Rico, IWA, and then you had Tiger Ali Singh come over. Mm-hmm. And he was actually sent by the WWF, so it's not exactly the same. Yes. But then he gets injured, sues the company, they fire him. Or I think they fire him, and then he tries to sue the company one way or another. And it just seems like a legal minefield to allow these physical third-party bookings rather than just signings or something. Well, I think they wanted to involve me in the suit and I would be a defendant. And I told him right quick, no, I didn't send him here. You guys sent him here and you wanted him to get experience. I was giving him experience. I was doing every, at the, the main part of this, I told him, I said, you guys hadn't give me a dime for this. You want me to train these guys yet. You want me to bring them down here and book them and train them and teach them. But yet at the same time, you didn't give me a nickel. And me and Jim Ross went round and round about that one day. And he said, well, Dutchman. And I said, well, Jimbo, and we'll see what he goes. And I actually, I ended up talking to him, talking to the lawyer because I would never take his calls. What's your main lawyer up there? What was his name? He's oh, not there anymore. Yeah. He's just, he's just retired. I have this. What was it? Not Jim something. Um, but he handled all the suits, yeah. But he called me up, and finally, you know, I took the call. Jerry McDivitt, there we go. McDivitt called me up. Dutch, you're a hard man to get a hold of. Now, lawyer talk. I said, well, yeah, maybe I don't want to talk to you. He said, well, I was kind of figuring that. But he said, listen, we need some help from you. I says, and what? We need you to come up here to Stanford. I said, to do what? To testify. And now they wanted me to be on their side now. I said, testify for what? He said, on behalf of WWE, we need, we need you. I said, but when is it? And he told me. And I said, well, okay, well, I'm, I'm running, I'm working then. I'm running active shows and doing TVs and all. And he said, well, that'll have to wait. Wait a minute. It's, I said, what are you going to pay me? He said, oh, oh, we can't pay you. Because legally, if they found out we paid you, we'd be at whatever, and we can't, we can't do it. I said, so, Jerry, this is what you want me to do. You want me to leave my job down here to where I'm only working three days a week anyway, but I'm booking and I'm doing other things the other days. You want me to leave to come up there to Stanford and sit around for a week and no pay because I won't get any pay down here but you don't want to give me any pay. And I says, I don't, I don't think I can do that. And he says, well, I'm going to give you a choice. You either come up here or we're going to send you a subpoena. When he said subpoena, that's an obligation to attend. So I said, let me tell you one thing, Jerry. Okay. Let's do this. Why don't you send me a subpoena and bring me up there? And don't th- even think about deposing me because I'm not going to do it. And then put me on the stand. Why don't you try that? And he knew I was pissed off. And he thought a minute and he said, okay, Dutch, uh, we'll talk to you later. And hung, hung the phone up, which meant that he put me up there. I'm pissed off anyway. I'm going to say everything Tiger Jeet Singh and his daddy said, and I'm going to bury WWE because I'm fucking pissed at them. Hate to use the word, but yeah, they want me to drop everything for them to where they did nothing for me. They would pay a a, a regular guy off the street. If he's going to train those guys, they would pay him at least $1,500 a week. I got, I didn't get 1500 pennies. I got nothing, and I thought, well, I'm not doing it, period. Uh, I'm not that much of a damn trying to get in good with you guys type. You either pay me or I'm not coming, and, and that's they, it. And they got their own back on you by sending you David Flair a couple of years later. Um, before, Well, I don't know. It was about the same time. It was, and I they think said, David Flair was but, a couple no, of years but, later but, after that. But Dave, David wasn't sent by WWE. 
Oh, he was sent by Rick, wasn't he? He was sent by Rick because he called me up, you know, and that line bastard. I'm looking for a way, a, a place to send my kid. I said, well, I guess I could find out. To the gym? Just could have sent him there first. Yeah. That would have helped. And he said, listen, if you do this, this is his exact words. It's the only reason I did it. I said, he says, if you book him six months, I will give you two dates on me. Well, two dates was two more dates than we'd ever had on him, really, in my, because he was just completely out of the, out of the running with anybody I could book. So I booked him for, I don't know, about three months. We looked, we looked at this. It was longer than you thought. It was something like six to eight. He was there well, for, may, he was there may for have been, long but time. I'm saying the three months is when he started bitching. And he didn't want to do this. And he didn't want to do the strut from his daddy. And he didn't want to. I said, well, yeah, that's what you, I think you need to do it. And he'd go out there and do it, but half ass. So finally he, he got pissed off one day. And I think Rick told him just pack up and go leave. And he did packed up, left. I didn't hear anything from him. And never heard another thing from Rick. He just left. So I booked his kid as a favor to Rick and got stung on it. I mean, it didn't hurt me that bad. You couldn't have, you, I don't know. You couldn't have drawn nothing with him. I mean, with Rick, with the kid, he was getting better, but he's the type that you put on a card and you let the people in free. And then after his match, you charged them to get out. Mm. They were so dis, and he wasn't that bad. He could have been, but he didn't want to be there. He had his girlfriend with him. They didn't like it. Of uh, this, that, and the other. And I got out of Actually, I got tired of it too. So David, I think, is out of the professional wrestling business now. Mm. I don't know what he's doing, but whatever he's doing, you know, maybe he's not bothering me. <laughs> Uh, just to bring it back briefly with the AEW. So it's tough for Tony Khan in this sense because he can attract certain big name talents because of the lighter, you know, the, the less amount of dates, but also because uh, talent to a point have freedom to work other promotions as well, like CMLL, which is a big one recently with uh, Brian Danielson and Blue Panther or New Japan or GCW or whatever. So it's a sort of double-edged sword that, you know, he attracts talent for, and then allows them to do these indie dates here with approval. Okay. But then if one gets injured, Say, then what do you do then? Yeah. Okay, he sends talent to Japan. That's kind of, I scratch your back, you scratch my back deal, because they have talent to send back. Having them work a regular little independent show, even though they might have got, I don't know, great money for it. I mean, they're the they're the star on the show, and if they get hurt, uh, like you say, who pays who and when? He's got a contract, and if they know before they're going that if you go there and you get hurt, with the veterans it doesn't much matter. With the young guys, it it does matter because they don't know, and they might go and agree to do all kind of crazy stuff, but they're amusing themselves. Because they're not going to sell any more tickets once they get there. But, I mean, that's up to Tony. He needs to straighten that out. We'll end on this note, and it's a happy note. Mark Briscoe, congratulations to him for finally winning the Ring of Honor World Championship after winning the tag titles with the promotion 13 times with his brother, Jay Briscoe. So, Mark Briscoe, Ring of Honor World Champion. Uh, any stories about Mark? Because I know you're a fan of the Briscoes of the day. I'm a fan of... the of them because I just saw tapes of them. So I brought them to Puerto Rico and the fans kind of knew who they were because they, they have character. They have personality. They have presence and they can work. And if you read their story, you know, they're farmers up in somewhere, Delaware or somewhere. And I forgot what they farm, but they're, they're good guys. And I booked them in Puerto Rico one time. They wanted to come. And I said, yeah, I'll book them. And they came down, not for a lot of money, really. It was like regular money. I mean, 
we paid them more than we pay our, they pay the regular guys, but they came down, did a good job and pleasant to be around. And I was really hurt. Which one, which one died? Jay. Well, he was, he was like the leader of the group, I, I would think. And I really felt bad for him, his brother, and his family when he passed away. And those were the type of guys who had no enemies. Everybody liked them. They'll do everything, anything you want to do. And they have some really creative stuff. Plus, it's their, it's their presentation on interviews. And they're out there looking wild, and they're looking crazy. And you can believe they came from the background they said they came from. Which and the people bought them. So, uh, congratulations to and the other one's name is what Jay and who Mark. So Mark is the uh, now a Mark, world Mark. So Mark, congratulations on your on your newly gained belt, and I hope you keep it a, quite a while. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to shut down this podcast just before I do. The I just went on my Twitter, and AEW has told Bleacher Report to remove the CM Punk, Jack Perry uh, video. So I don't understand why AEW would show this Because <laughs> they're getting roasted. Well, of course they are. I mean, didn't t- Tony Khan was there fearing for his life the entire way through. He must have known what happened. But, but he said that he, he threatened to air this nine months ago. Yeah. Can Tony look at that and completely put... The, the heat on CM Punk, can he do that? Can he uh, can he show that, tell what he sees and feel it, that the company's not going to side with, with him, they're going to side with CM Punk? Hmm. And he's got a bad, I, I think that he has a bad public relations problem because it's like a, a frat boy uh, dormitory, you know, What's that movie they made about that? The, you remember? Well, Animal something. Animal House. Animal I think House. it's, the, yeah, I think it's the wrestling Animal House, and they're just looking at Tony and saying, "Hey, only one guy can fix it, and that's you. Don't look at us. We're just hearing stuff." So, but so he sued uh, Bleacher Bleacher. What is it? Bleacher no, no, Report? A Bleacher Report. He didn't sue them. He's a uh, DM. Well, that's the next DMRC thing. Next thing from it. Yeah, a copyright takedown them. notice. To take it down, and YouTube would take it down anyway, right? Oh God, they would. That is exactly why I didn't post it on my on this on this podcast. Okay, it just wasn't they, worth the aggro. Here's a question: If they take it down, do they take the whole show down? Oh yeah. Oh, that's not good. So that's why it's just not worth the aggro. So no, it's um, not. So uh, basically, oh, there's one more thing I forgot to mention about that. Apparently, there may have been a second incident where CM Punk then lunged after Tony Khan after that video that we saw. So I don't know why they didn't show that video because now everybody... Well, but that has to be a camera shot from another direction, doesn't it? Well, I, d- I don't know. I mean, it didn't show... I was Punk seeing it that. this way. I was seeing it straight ahead of me and it was like the guys were going and where Tony was was behind a wall mm-hmm. on the right-hand side that was hidden. And the punk, you could see him talking, and punk was, uh, you know, uh, the little kid was facing my way, punk was facing the other way, and all of a sudden, you could see his expression on uh, on Jungle Boy's face, like, and all of a sudden, boom, or push, and then they went down, then they separated them, then punk left, and then kind of went back and said something to the to Tony Khan there, so I couldn't tell what was said or what was done. But if I was on a, if it went to a jury trial, CM Punk's in the free. Well, it never would go to a jury trial. Anyway, uh, that is it for this podcast. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back again this Tuesday. Back to usual with Ask Dutch Anything. So if you've got a question for the Dirty Dutchman himself, the crafty veteran, you email it to questionsfordutch at gmail.com. But for now, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you again on Tuesday. And Dutch, we the people. We the people.